Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today we are going to start talking about the sequential markets equilibrium. What we're going to do today is we are going to talk about the setup for the sequential market world. So today in our setup, we are going to review the similarities to the Aaron de Brew equilibrium setup. So I'm not going to cover everything in detail. If there is something in the setup that you're not quite sure about, feel free to check out the Aaron de Brew setup video. In particular about this setup, we're going to talk about trading in the sequential market equilibrium and assets. Then we are going to derive the budget constraint, which is going to be slightly new for the sequential market equilibrium. And then just like before, we will end with defining the competitive equilibrium and introducing this concept called the no Ponzi game condition. Timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get into it by quickly reviewing the setup of this world. So in this world, we still got two people, Bill and Dave, they both live forever. They both know everything about themselves and others. We still have this objective function, it's their utility function over their lifetime. And we've got this time discount factor beta. Technology, we've still got endowments. So every period, we still have coconuts that are appearing on Bill's and Dave's porch. Endowments are not always equal. And you can keep thinking about this like every day, Bill and Dave, they each own a coconut tree. And every day, their tree drops some amount EIT number of coconuts. And for the problem that we are going to solve, we are going to do the same as the Aaron Brew, where Bill gets two coconuts in even periods, zero in odd periods, and Dave gets the opposite. Now let's talk about trading in the sequential market. So similarly to the ADE economy, we're gonna have IOUs for coconuts. So I trade a promise to pay one coconut tomorrow. Now, instead of all the trading happening before time equals zero, we are gonna have one market every day. So every day you come out and you trade your promises to pay a coconut tomorrow. So we're gonna call this IOU bot today, we're gonna to call this AT plus one, and we're gonna call the price of AT plus one QT, Q sub T. And remember that coconuts go bad. So if you want to take a coconut today into period T plus two, what you need to do is you need to buy an IOU in period T. So you pay someone today, so they give you a coconut tomorrow. Tomorrow you do the same thing. You buy an IOU tomorrow to give you a coconut in T plus one. And that is the only way that you can take a coconut from today into two days from now or into some number of periods into the future. So here is a picture that I like to keep in my head of this market. You have borrowers in green and lenders in purple. And each of the lenders have a coconut that they are willing to sell the borrowers today in exchange for the borrower paying them a coconut tomorrow. And there is a price QT in this market, and this happens every single day. Now, something that's going to come up is, well, if I'm a borrower, can't I just keep borrowing and keep borrowing and borrowing in order to pay my loans from yesterday? And we are going to put in a condition that prevents the borrower from just borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and getting into an infinite amount of debt. But first, let's derive the lifetime budget, which is really just going to be a budget every period for the consumer. So. The consumer chooses to eat a number of coconuts, so we'll call that CTI. Then he can choose to buy a number of coconuts for tomorrow, number of assets, so that's going to be QT, A, T plus one, and that's going to be equal to the endowment of coconuts he gets today, plus the IOUs that he is owed today. So if he lent someone a coconut yesterday and he gets a coconut today, so his endowment is boosted by the number of coconuts he's owned today or getting paid back today for the fact that he loaned them out yesterday. So notice that this is going to be true for all T. So we're going to have T constraints in our maximization problem. Now we are ready to define the sequential market equilibrium. So again, this is going to fit our definition of a competitive equilibrium, but let's walk through it together. A sequential markets equilibrium is an allocation where each person is allocated a consumption and also assets from T equals zero to infinity. Sometimes you could put this plus one if you would like, either one is fine for each person. Given prices, QT from T equals zero to infinity. It's got to solve both Bill's and Dave's utility maximization problem. This is their utility maximization problem. This is their budget constraint in each period. So notice that this lambda now has a T because there are T lambdas or T constraints in this maximization problem. And we need to ensure market clearing in the goods market where we can only eat what we have been endowed. And in the asset market, we need the total number of assets in each period to be zero. What does this mean? 
This means that if I'm a borrower, I have to be able to find a lender. And if I'm a lender, I have to be able to find a borrower. So I can't lend coconuts that don't exist and I can't borrow coconuts that don't exist. So the sum of assets in this economy in every period need to be zero. So this is also for all T. Now, I also mentioned that we're not allowed to infinitely borrow. We can't get into infinite amount of debt. That's called a no Ponzi game condition. And that just says that my number of assets tomorrow has to be greater than some large negative number A upper bar. And again, all we're trying to do is prevent the consumer from borrowing and borrowing and borrowing into a place that he will never recover from. So this is really a constraint on the consumer. And when we solve the utility maximization problem, we just need to make sure that that condition holds. So now we are all ready to start solving the sequential markets equilibrium, which we are going to do in the next two videos. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.